If you spend any time on Twitter, social media, or group chats over the past couple of months, you might have seen images and text like this floating around. What looks at first glance like colored rows of square emojis that seem to denote some sort of coded message turns out to be the viral sharing of a word game called Wordle. Over the past few weeks, myself, along with millions of people around the world, have bitten into the Wordle hype and have really enjoyed playing and sharing strategies for solving the game with friends. But a game like this doesn't just come out of nowhere, and its growth doesn't just happen overnight. So in this video, we'll take a look at what Wordle is, the story of the one man behind his creation and just how it's gotten so viral. The creator of Wordle is Josh Wardle, and the name of the game is a play on his last name. Online, he goes by the moniker of Power Language, and he's British, so hence the name of his website, powerlanguage.co.uk. A New York Times article published earlier this year tells an endearing love story about how he made the game for his partner to play during the pandemic because they loved word games. And it was first shared amongst his family and friends directly until it was finally released to the public around October of 2021. If we look into Josh's background a bit, he was an art student who started working at Reddit as an office artist for a couple years, according to his LinkedIn. And then he transitioned to being a product manager at Reddit for the community engineering team, where he pioneered some of its viral April Fool's projects. And currently, he's a software engineer. And as someone who's been on Reddit for a very long time and who's personally participated in all of these April Fool's events that Josh uh, has been a big part of, I'm not surprised now that he's behind Wordle. His past projects at Reddit, like Place, The Button, and Robin, each of these could be its own video breakdown in its own right. I think they're each fascinating, almost game-like community projects that are a masterclass in community engagement and online behavioral interaction. This is another tangent, but he does have on his YouTube page a great talk where he breaks down some of the key lessons he's learned through these projects. I'll link to it in the description, and I'd recommend checking it out if you're interested in that type of thing. With all that said about his background, my main takeaway here is that Josh is really well versed in creating interesting, engaging, gamified features for the internet, with particular attention paid to community engineering. In other words, anticipating and altering the way users interact with each other in-game. It's no surprise that he's translated a lot of these technical and soft skills to his other side projects. So now that we know a little bit about the background of the creator, let's talk about the game and how it went viral. I'll start with a quick explanation about how Wordle works, and if you're watching this video, you've probably played it already, so feel free to skip this section if you'd like. But the premise behind Wordle is quite simple. You're trying to guess what a certain secret five-letter word is, and you get six guesses. With each guess, you're told whether each letter of your guess word is present in the actual word, and that's denoted with a yellow or a black square, and whether it's in the right position, which is denoted with a green square. These context clues allow you to optimize your subsequent guesses through a process of elimination and deduction, and the end goal is to solve in as few guesses as possible. What gives Wordle its trademark look and feel is the resulting checkerboard of colored square emojis that appear once you try to share your results out. To those who know how the game works, it displays your strategy for solving and your logical progress from each guess to guess, as well as how quick you got there. Fewer rows means fewer guesses, and the convergence of green and yellow squares from row to row shows off one's deductive reasoning skills. In essence, you're sharing out your accomplishment while also showing how you solved the puzzle and giving insight into the path you took to do so. But to those who have no idea what Wordle is, the colored squares probably look like some sort of hidden message. I can say that before I played the game, the curiosity of wanting to understand what the squares meant and wanting to be in the know was a big draw for me personally to picking up the game. And I think this certainly helped the game go viral on Twitter as a lot of users shared their solutions and brought in waves of new players who wanted to figure out what was going on. And speaking of Twitter, according to a great BuzzFeed article that breaks down how Wordle went viral, they traced it back to a group of New Zealand Twitter users who first started tweeting about the game and sharing their progress and solutions under the hashtag DailyWordleClub. It was actually these users who birthed the idea of using colored emoji squares to display their solutions, and eventually Wordle implemented this feature into the game's sharing option. And I'll harp on this sharing mechanic a bit longer. I think what started as the convenient usage of emojis to show off a Wordle solution became the viral sharing mechanism for the wider distribution of the game. Now, social hooks are nothing new. Back in the day of Facebook games like Farmville and of course with mobile gaming today, casual games all utilize the best practice of prompting users to share the results to social media. The idea is that you can show off your accomplishments to your friends while the game benefits from word of mouth visibility through the user's social media audience. But I think where Wordle's sharing mechanic takes a slight departure is that it's completely text-based and minimalist, whereas other games often might ask you to share images, links, and otherwise intrusive messaging. The fact that this game isn't in your face with marketing and branding, and the fact that it doesn't give you a link to install an app or visit a website, while counterintuitive to conventional marketers, I think is a key to its success. It doesn't ask you to do anything, it just delivers value. And Josh talks about this in an interview in response to someone asking whether he plans to make money from it. He says, I don't understand why something can't just be fun. I don't have to charge people money for this, and ideally I would like to keep it that way. I think that the earnestness, the simplicity, the lack of clutter, and the lack of trying to monetize it and shove it into people's faces has worked in his favor for this game going viral. 
If a conventional growth marketer like myself was trying to grow this game, you would for sure see tracking links embedded, hooks directing back to the website, a lot of marketing ad copy. I mean, this probably would have been published as a mobile app with ads, and it would have made hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not more, depending on how long the hot streak for this app goes on for. But who's to say if it would have gone viral in the first place if it was packaged and oversold like that? It feels like the reason it went viral in the first place is because it had that weekend hackathon game feel to it. The BuzzFeed article connects a few additional dots on Wordle's path to virality. Google searches for Wordle first spiked in New Zealand in December of 2021, and then Australia, which geologically makes sense. And from there, The Guardian picked it up in an article, which was the turning point for it to spread to the UK and Canada. Then on January 3rd, the New York Times article I mentioned earlier releases, and that's when the game really starts to blow up in the US, and the game starts getting some serious, serious traffic. So there's this clear path of growth that ripples through Tier 1 English-speaking countries, starting from New Zealand and Australia, ending with the US. Taking a look at Google Trends, the line graph certainly agrees with that story. You see the uptick start in early January to coincide with the New York Times article, and now that we're in late January, it's starting to show the first signs of possibly plateauing. It almost feels like you can't go on Twitter without seeing some celebrity or some friend or connection sharing their Wordle solutions for the day. Now one thing that jumps out to me about Wordle's awesome viral growth is the fact that the creator left a lot of money on the table. Casual word games like this, if turned into a mobile app, could generate hundreds of thousands if not millions in installs and revenue. But I respect the attitude that Josh Wardle has about this, where because it's a passion project, he won't monetize or productize it further. But that hasn't stopped other opportunistic people from doing so and writing his coattails. A couple of really interesting examples have come to light. It turns out that a guy named Steven Cravada, a marketer and coder, coincidentally released a mobile app of the same name years ago. It was a different game, but people searching for Wordle in the app stores were directed to his app because the actual Wordle game it only exists on a website. Steven explains in a Twitter thread that one day he woke up to see hundreds of thousands of installs and a sudden influx of users and revenue. Now props to him because he goes on to explain that he reached out to Josh, the creator of Wordle, and together they decided to donate all the proceeds. Now that's a feel-good outcome, but if we look at the other side of the coin, there are lots of Wordle clones that are popping up on the app stores that are direct copies of the original now. One example is by this guy named Zach, who titled his app Wordle-The App, and he boasted about how he was getting thousands of downloads and paid subscriptions while charging people $30 a year to play the game. Apple has since removed some of the clones, but it goes to show that with any industry, not just gaming, if you have a cool new product or service, people will be quick to copy and profit off of the hype. A part of me almost wants to feel bad for Josh because he left a lot of money on the table, uh, but maybe that's just me projecting my own thoughts. I'm sure that as a software engineer, he's doing fine, and I really respect his commitment to the art and the spirit of the project. So what's next for Wordle? Uh, if I had to guess, I think we're just arriving at the peak of Wordle's popularity, at least in its current form on Josh's website. I think that by early to mid-February, we'll start to see instances of people sharing their Wordle results on Twitter greatly diminish, and for the fad to start to pass. However, I do think that Wordle's puzzle mechanics will live on through imitations and derivations in other games. Just as a game like Scrabble served as the forefather for countless spin-offs, I think Wordle is another inflection point that will revive a new strain of word games. To wrap the video up, I'll recap my top takeaways. I think one on the marketing side, sometimes less is more. Wordle's minimalist aesthetic, its unintrusive sharing mechanics, and just its overall user-friendly presentation really endeared it to players and allowed its users to do the evangelizing for the game. The fact that it was almost anti-marketing was its marketing. And two, as is usual with these tales of viral growth, we have our set of early adopters and the early New Zealand Twitter users. With most new products or trends, a vocal set of early power users can really define the culture and habits of the movement early on and serve as a springboard for additional discovery. In this case, the early users contributed the emoji sharing functionality as well as its early Twitter discovery. And lastly, I'll say that if Josh Wardle was a stock, I would certainly invest in him. I think his side projects are at the intersection of community, art, and programming, and Wordle is just one small expression of a larger body of work by him. His work at Reddit with all those April Fool's community projects is really, really interesting, and I'm just really excited to see what he comes up with next. Anyways, thanks for watching, and feel free to share your Wordle scores with me if you'd like. As for me, I'm probably done playing for a while because I hit a two-guest solution the other day, and I'm definitely not going to be able to beat it. Until next time, take care, and thanks for watching.